So I was studying, I said, at what points am I spirit, is my spirit absorbing, absorbing more and what times my spirit is absorbing less. One thing that I noticed was the more I was involved with every word, the more I felt the spirit of the word coming towards me. Okay, that was number one. Two, I noticed that when I was freely worshipping the Lord, and I forgot that whatever titles you want to give me and I forgot that you were in the room and I began to worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness with reverence. I began to feel my spirit growing in great speed. So I observed what my response was. I noticed that as I began to sing it out loudly, the lyrics of the song, as I began to sing it out loudly, something was happening. And I noticed that when I clapped my hands loudly and I sang, I felt like there was a synchronization of entire my body, my spirit and my mind all coming together. I felt like a synchronization. So I noticed that it was not enough that I was humming the song. Something changed in my reverence when I was singing that song out loud and with reverence clapping my hands as loud as I could and allowed my entire body to partake of that worship. I noticed that within 30 seconds, the glory of God was manifesting. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I was experimenting, I'm telling you. It, it was beautiful and I said, wow, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. There must be a synchronization of your spirit man, your soul, which is your mind, and your body. There must be a synchronization one more time there must be a the bible says from inside your belly shall rivers of water flow am i right okay yeah. some version says from inside of you uh, but belly is referring to the deepest part of you okay it does not mean physically the stomach so then what it's referring to is the deepest part of you the deepest part of you is your spirit. The deepest part of you is what? Spirit. Your spirit. Spirit comes first, soul comes second, and everything is covered by your body. Your body is the, the vessel that contains the soul and the spirit. Spirit is the part of God that is in you. Spirit is the part of God that is in you. Soul is the bridge between the spirit and the body. It is the point of communication. Okay? Soul connects, brings sense to the spirit realm and introduces it to the body. Are you with me? So it's the soul that is the bridge that explains the functions of the body and the spirit. It is the part that has willpower. It is the part that thinks. It is a part that is the conscious and your subconscious. Okay? Now the spirit man functions by itself but without soul it cannot communicate to the body. So the spirit uses the soul to communicate to the body. So now the weakest part of you is the body. Okay, the weakest part of you is the body because the body is dependent on the soul and it is dependent on the spirit. Now, your soul is the sum results of your past. 
your soul is a sum result of your past soul is a sum result of everything that has happened to you every school that you've studied every friendship you've had every relationship you got into your parents your teachers your church the teachings that you have listened to all of that where does it go to it's in the realm of the soul okay so now that means that what what you allow into your soul will determine the level at which your body can function okay the level at which your body is running now your spirit is limitless the spirit is limitless everybody say limitless how can i say that because that's the part that came from god when god blew into adam the breath of god the ruha of god that's the part that can do things that your body cannot do that's the part that does what your body cannot do so you're looking at the greatness that is shut inside of you so when he says out to him who believes out of his belly shall rivers of water flow that's another verse right john 7:38 what the, what does that mean from the part of you that was that is the extension of god from the part of you that is the extension of god when your mind now starts aligning with those things of god of god of god of god of god then everything that is shut inside the spirit now will begin to flow but it still flows through the mind are you understanding what i'm saying it doesn't it doesn't erase the mind it doesn't overpower the mind it's still the channel this is this is ah, this is getting exciting tonight <laughs> so it, it 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 flows from your spirit but it is filtered through your soul it is filtered through every wrong theology that you have been taught it has been filtered by every lie everything that your mother taught that may not be right because for some people if some people say it it's absolute truth but then your mama also has a limitation to what she was exposed because certain people we respect them so much because we've seen them all of our lives that we allow their words to become god's word but until they can show it to you in the scriptures don't just go by what you've been hearing for years and years my growth happened when i began to say i am not going to go by everything that i have automatically learned in my childhood i need to test it i need to retest it this is the choice the choice is i continue to hold on to my belief and i continue to produce certain results in my life or i let go of this i put my leg out and and start walking on water at the risk of drowning when i was ready to get out of the boat i found that it didn't sink me the word was able to hold me up so it's very nerve wracking like you you you're sacrificing 10 20 years of your understanding and you're saying god teach me fresh teach me fresh so now the rivers begin to flow out okay but still the principles are not complicated the principles that our god has placed in the scripture is not complicated the process looks complicated because what we are actually looking at is the spirit that is shut inside of us breaking through our soul okay yeah 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 and then making it releasing it out of the body for example the alabasta is one of the best examples that oil that ointment that perfume that was inside the alabasta jar was worth 50000 us dollars okay it was her one year salary 50000 us dollars 
Isn't that something? Some of you are crying about giving 50 bucks to the Lord. 50,000 US dollars. Okay? So imagine a 50,000 US dollar perfume. Is it going to be kept in a $5 box? Somebody, when I went to UK, they gave me a, a perfume. He was, a, he was a, 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 a boxer. He was so blessed. He, 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 didn't, he didn't carry any money with him. He, he's like, what, what, what do I get? What do I get? He ran to his, his, uh, his car and he found a, a box. He said, at the moment, this is the only thing that is of any worth to me. Please, I want to give it to you. I said, look, you don't have to. He, no, no, he insisted. I said, okay, I take it. I, I realized it was just a perfume, but it was, it was put in the biggest box I've ever seen. <laughs> so I looked and I said, Yeesh, why is he carrying this whole box in his car? He was carrying it. And then I spoke to somebody who knew perfumes. And, and I didn't have to talk about it. As soon as he came into the room, he smelled it and he said, Hey, you're wearing this? I said, ah, wow. 25 years I've worn a lot of perfumes. <laughs> and you didn't tell me it was this perfume. But this guy, he comes in and he says, you're smelling this. So now I understood why he was kept in a box. It was of great value. So there was a special box created for it. So now, imagine 50,000 US dollars worth of perfume. Do you think that it is going to be kept in, a, in a, a jar that is not expensive? I'm sure the jar by itself would have been expensive. <laughs> How many of you know what I'm talking about? Is this making sense? You know when you buy an expensive gift, even the box is expensive. So what does she do? What does she do? She said, I don't want to give this perfume to him and take the box back home. Because she could make money with the box. She could sell just the box by itself, just the jar by itself. So she breaks it into pieces. <laughs> At the feet of the master, he said, there is no going back on my journey with Jesus. There is no what? Okay. So imagine an expensive alabaster jar. Beautiful designery, embroidery, flowers, whatever colors. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. She brings it. Does not hand it over to it as, as if it was precious. Instead she breaks it. Why? She's saying there's nothing more precious than the one who is in front of me. Once upon a time, this was precious to me. But now, in the presence of the one, ah, the lover of my soul, I'm going to make sure I break down every idol in my heart that there is nothing that will have special place in my life, in my heart, before the Lord Jesus Christ. How powerful is that? Can you, can you imagine that? So, right when people were watching, I'm sure people gasped. I'm sure people went, was that an accident? No, 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 no. No, no, no. It wasn't an accident. It was an intentional act of breaking that jar. It was an intention. The moment she broke that, ah, ay, ay, ay. okay, I want you to imagine this. The words of Jesus is what? Is that wherever this gospel is going to be preached, they're going to talk about you. And what did she do? Break an expensive alabaster jar at the feet of Jesus. He didn't say that about anybody else. He didn't say that about anybody else who had great faith, who came and got received healing and she said, no, 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 no. She's saying that about somebody who brought him an offering. You see, he became quiet there. I'm telling you, this is why Satan fights offerings even today. Satan fights what? 
offering talk about offerings the devil gets very uncomfortable because he knows what happened to a woman who brought an expensive offering she became part of the gospel of jesus he said wherever this gospel is going to be preached they're going to talk about you isn't it true any time somebody wants to bring a crusade they say they talk about the lady with the alabaster jar <laughs> every church at least once in a year they'll talk about a lady with the alabaster jar any offering service as you know once upon a time there was a lady with the alabaster jar that was a prophecy of jesus wherever this gospel is going to be preached they're going to talk about you you that moved the heart of god so think about it what was so special about it what was more precious that was was it the one on the outside or the one on the inside the one on the inside so how does that which is precious on the inside flow out on the outside in the kingdom in the kingdom not in the world in the world they'll give you a spray put a small hole and they put it back that's not kingdom that's the world but in the kingdom there is no 10 person 10 person 10 save it for summer no 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 in the kingdom in the kingdom the manner in which the kingdom works is you break everything at his feet it is in that act the rivers that are shut inside of you will begin to flow out may i suggest that in your worship your flesh is the alabaster jar your flesh is what ah your flesh is the alabaster jar the perfume where is the perfume flowing from from the spirit what is the bridge between both your soul your mind your conscious your subconscious you're like oh everybody is watching everybody no my dear everybody is closing eyes <laughs> but you feel like everybody in the room is watching at you come on tell me the truth am i not right you have to learn how to move the heart of god when he sees that you're so conscious about people and you're still worshiping like a crazy man I'm telling you some of you see very anointed people around you and you think that you know they must have done something very complicated and all the while all they did was clap hands like they were crazy for Jesus all they did you're telling me you're telling me this woman broke an alabaster jar of $50,000 and the rest of the year she was begging around Yeah you're telling me that she gave this offering to Jesus and now rest of the year she was like wondering why she spent all that money at one offering box no my Jesus is too faithful you don't know my Jesus so your faith is very critical if your faith says i have to just be careful we have to do we, we have to be diligent the market is down it's very dangerous oh you have to be wise oh no 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 you you see where you're going your spirit is already negative now the greatness that is shut inside you the spirit man is not released you're so scared so the spirit cannot activate its total reverse that is shut inside cannot manifest through you because your soul is hindering the blessing that your body is supposed to receive your soul your soul your soul imagine if it was this precious woman if she was living today she would have not put that that alabaster jar because all her friends would be saying ah look i know you really love jesus but you see you have to be wise the economy is very bad i don't know if it's yeah 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 she's saying that she wants to break the alabaster jar do you think it is wisdom that she breaks it or she pours it uh, maybe she can put it in 10 small different jars and give it to jesus one for peter one for john <laughs> can you imagine the ideas they would have given her and all she wanted to do was break it at his i don't care 
how they use it. Just break it at his feet. Ah, may you become a deadly Christian after tonight. So you have to look as a child of God, what brings revival? Revival is the oneness of your spirit. Your subconscious and conscious has to become one. Your subconscious and your conscious has to become one. Your subconscious and conscious must become one. Stop doubting. Child of God, stop doubting. Imagine living such a lifestyle. Ah. Where now it doesn't take you 30 minutes to tap into the presence of God. Your life becomes an alabaster jar. Uh, uh, your life, now you start functioning like an alabaster jar that nothing hinders you. Uh, your, your soul is not telling you, oh, but I don't think you should kneel down. Oh, but I don't think you should clap hands now. I think everybody is watching you. Maybe you can just calm down a bit. Maybe you can just take it easy. You tell your mind, shut up. Shut up. I'm not your servant. I'm not the servant of my soul. I'm not the servant of my past. Hello, hello. Greetings from Canada. I'm Tini Matthew. We are so glad to have met you through this God TV program. I'm sure the word was like fire in your bones. Now allow this fire to take you to places and fulfill the God-given assignment in your lives. Thank you for following us and partnering with us. Every seed is a blessing. May God remember your giving and richly bless you. Much love and shalom. Distance is not a barrier to God. RevivedNations.tv is now open to live participation to our services. 